Hold on. Marilyn Monroe, it's very hot right now. Wait till you see this. I gotta go for it. I don't know. What do you do with it? They're kind of uh, dated. She'll be lucky to even get a bit on it, really. Crash and burn. Although Burlington, Kentucky is closer to the banks of Cincinnati, Ohio than the bluegrass pastures of Louisville and Lexington, it's hard not to think about horse racing at first mention of the Kentucky State. Even at this third Sunday of the month flea market, antiques dealers trot out their merchandise at the Burlington Fairgrounds within trotting distance of nearby horseback riding rings. Our warriors know this is also NASCAR country. Hey, Kevin, this flea market isn't for sissies. Look out. And they realize the raw speed and fierce maneuvering that sport requires make a sharper comparison to the flea market frenzy about to ensue. Come on, move it! Less Kentucky Derby than Demolition Derby, this will be a no holds barred contest under the hot Kentucky sun. Come on, Bruno, let's go! These four pickers will attempt to outmaneuver dealers and their opponents as they buy undervalued items to flip at auction. She just hit us! I told you not to mess with me. Oh, what, is she crazy? Hey guys, welcome to Kentucky. Let's Kentucky. see what we got here. Cool. The Mint Julep Cup can trace its origins to early American silversmiths and has long been a symbol of prestige and achievement. In Kentucky, it has its own unique lines and has long been the drinking vessel many a horse race fan uses to make a toast before a big race, the most famous of which is the Kentucky Derby. So reach inside your silver cups, grab your cash, and count it. The bets are in, and the odds of each of you winning is four to one. Before the race begins, don't forget to raise your cups and wish each other good luck. Cheers. Cheers, baby. Woo. Good luck. Here are the rules for today's competition. There are two rounds of buying. Each picker gets $1,000. Miller, what do you think? A little money my way to help pay for that damage you did to the car out there on the track. It was coming your way. Oh, yeah? yeah. All right. <laughs> the round one target item must be one item only, unless what they're buying is being sold as a set or a pair. The target item will be chosen by the auctioneer at Abel Auction in Los Angeles, where all of today's items will be sold. For the target round, we'd like you to find good lighting for us to sell at auction. Obviously, there's a lot of different types of good lighting. People are looking for quality. Good luck, guys. I hope you guys find some great lamps for us. And remember, contemporary is always better in today's market. Lighting's great. Lighting works. Time will be kept by this giant cuckoo clock. Pickers have one hour to find their target item, starting now. See ya. OK. See ya. All right, good luck, guys. Take care. Good Let's luck. go. Good luck, all. The lighting runs the gamut, and it runs the gamut over at Abel's auction, too. So I'm wide open today. If I can buy something for the right price that we can make money on, that's what I'm going for. This is a really nice deco lamp from the 1920s, 30s, but unfortunately, it's cracked right here. If I'm going to buy a lamp to send to auction, it's got to be perfect. We're going to keep looking. I have something definite in mind I want to get to before my competitors. I saw these chrome lamps as we're driving in this morning. As I'm walking along, I'm looking and I'm looking. I forgot exactly where they were. I can't spot them. Problem is, John, if you saw them, so did plenty of other people. So be prepared. Those lamps may be long gone. Damn, I bet you they sold. Wait, maybe they're here. Finally stumble onto the booth where they were. Uh-oh. Are those sold or are those still available? There's a sold. Oh, man, you don't do that to me. Do? Darn it, two of them were sold. Mount from under me. Unsold them. A little still. late. I know. I got this one still. Luminaire. Yeah, I know the Luminaire company very, very well. How much you have on that? It's for you. For me, 50 bucks. The dealer is telling John more than just his asking price. 
His tongue-in-cheek suggestion that the price is special just for John is a playful clue he won't easily be offended should John try to drive a hard bargain. For me, 50 bucks. Now the game starts. This is the part I love, negotiating. Since it's the only one here, and it's all alone, and you sold the other two, can you do 35? No. Oh, come on. No. Oh, wait a minute. I can, <laughs> but I choose not to. <laughs> Good man. I really want to do 40. Can you do 40 in that? I'll give it to you for 45. Come on, do 40. You wearing a ring? Yeah, you got a gold on here. You got a cheap watch. You're smart. Cheap watch. You're cheap, smart. Cheap. Forty-five. You got a deal. Forty-two fifty. Uh, Come on, forty-two fifty. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. I'll forty-two fifty. Forty-two fifty. Good man. I love the lamp. It's modern. It's sleek. It's chrome. It's got a marble base. Oh, this is wonderful. Yeah. All right, you want money, don't you? Forty-two, right? Forty-two. 42. Where's my money? Oh, there. Yeah. 55. Okay. okay, now we're even. No, we got 50 cents in there somewhere. 50 cents. If I can pull these out of your hand before you close your palm. Ready? Close. Yep. Okay, you got it? He's good. Good go. <laughs> He's good. I know I'm selling on the West Coast, so at the end of the day, I'm trying to find something that's really cool looking. So far, what I see are things like early American, more traditional. I'm going for something a little bit more funky. It's a pretty wild lamp you got here. Imagine one day there was a pair of these on either side of a bed, probably, in Ricky and Lucy's house. I think so. I'm Bob. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Hi. Diane. Nice to meet you, Diane. Diane, just out of curiosity, what would be your best on that? Now, that's a classic Bob move. We've nicknamed it his leaning with meaning. Leaning in and lowering his voice is his way of establishing intimacy with a dealer, as if the asking price is a secret just between the two of them. It doesn't always work to get a better deal, but it sure is fun to watch. It can be 15. OK, I'm filing it as a definite maybe. OK, <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Good to see you. I'll see you you too. Okay. Bob's mental Rolodex must be overloaded by now. He may want to consider going digital. This definitely stopped me in my tracks. I might go back to it, but I got to keep moving. Lighting. Lamps always do well at Abel's. I think a chandelier would do very well. I think a chandelier might be tricky to find today. These are cool. I like the lines on these. These are mid-century modern, a pair of lamps, but they're kind of tarnished. I think the tarnish is going to hurt the value at auction. Otherwise, I think the form and the lines on this are just right. How are you doing? I'm Kevin. Kevin, I'm Laura. Hi, Laura. Let's get to the nuts and bolts one second here. Those lamps, yeah. how much is the pair? Uh, I wanted three fifty for the pair. Three fifty for the pair? They're in great shape. Really cool tree form. Nice globular globes, shade kind of bulbs in them right here. And they're perfect for a California market, just where we want to send them. You got to give Kevin his due. With the dealer standing right at his side, he sings the praises of these lamps before negotiating. That easily could prompt her to dig in her heels on price. Whatever the outcome, though, Kevin's not the type to diminish the merchandise to get a better deal. You think we could probably talk turkey on these a little bit? So you make me an offer, and then All I'll right. tell you if you Well, you close. originally told me 350 mm -hmm. and I would love to make you an offer of around two and a quarter for the pair of lamps. 265 you'd make me feel a little better. How about, like, if I, I ground one. down to, like, 250 I just I like want you, you to know that I, I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to let you do that. Because what I feel is, is that if I keep it moving, like my blessings, when I let go of things, yeah, yeah, yeah. they seem to come back. I'm stoked right now. We got a nice pair of lamps for 250 a floor lamp and a regular lamp. She definitely said they were a pair. 1970s, cool, vintage mod, the new up-and-coming thing. I got to go for it. <laughs> Give me some love. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you, too. OK, cool. Those are awesome. Thank you. First one back. Ka-ching! Definite money. But why is Kevin back before John, since John was the first picker to buy his target item? He may be a slow walker, but he's not that slow. Whoa. Looks like a nice little time for catnap. I like the Art Deco lines of this lamp. Uh, this shade might not be for everybody, but shades are easy to switch out. Bob has learned the hard way never to do that in advance of an auction. He paid $300 for a moss lamp that sold for only $100 at auction. His loss was likely due to the fact the lamp was missing its original shade. So whatever you do, Bob, 
Don't switch it out. It definitely has a real feminine touch, but it's got these industrial Art Deco lines that I always love and gravitate to. I'm gonna go ask his best price. I'm not quite ready to make a purchase because I got a lot of market to see, but I'm gonna just see what he can do on this. How you doing? I was just wondering about that lamp over there. I need to cover a lot of ground and okay. need to get a good deal, so I'm wondering what your best is on it. Uh, what about 60? Well, again, I, I'm not ready to make a deal. I was just curious what your margin was on it, because um, I'm going to file it and walk around okay. a little bit, because I can only buy one thing right okay. now. So. OK, um, What was you thinking? Well, again, I'm not ready to completely negotiate, but if I could walk out of here paying $40, that would be right okay. for me. Uh, I would do 45 on it. All right, well, let me think. Okay. What's your name? Kevin. Kevin, I'm Bob. Okay. I really okay. appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I'll see you in just a bit, okay? Thank you. My strategy is to scope the market. I have four or five options already in my hip pocket. Now I just have to narrow it down. But I'm gonna keep looking for a few more minutes before I make my decision. I'm thinking the 50s turquoise lamp. I came in to buy the turquoise lamp and there was literally a woman in front of me who was carrying it over to the dealer and purchased it. Let's go. I think what it means is that I was meant to buy something else. I think I'm gonna head back for the silver floor lamp. I bet you I can get it for 30, 35, and I'm going in. Bob's prowess in haggling can be spotty, but sometimes he pumps himself up and goes into the ring as if he's George Foreman. I'm back again. Okay. Could you get to 30? I can yeah. take it off your hands. Mm, I, I, would, I would go back with the 40, but that would, be, that would be where I needed to go at. Remember, that's the dollar amount Bob already agreed to spend. If I could walk out of here paying $40, that would be right okay. for me. Uh, I would do 45 on it. Could we do 35? Okay. All right, I'm gonna take it for 35 okay. bucks. Okay. That's a great deal. Okay. And um, I love that the original shape comes with it. Okay. It's that, really, really that cool. Helps it. Awesome. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Since Bob told this dealer he didn't have much to spend, doesn't want him to see his big wad of bills. What'd you buy, Bob? Want some cool? Hi. Hey. This time it's John Bruno to the rescue, providing a well-timed distraction. I think yeah. you can probably see what I found. Oh, I thought it was a brooch. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Okay. All right, if you just give me five back, that'd okay. be awesome. I'm really happy with my purchase. I really do believe that things happen for a reason, and somebody came in literally in front of me and bought that turquoise lamp. My loss on that is a win on this, because I think this is what I was supposed to buy. Tell me about this. What's well, the chandelier? Well, where, where's uh, it from and what year? I'm not sure, but I think it's a, uh, a lot of brass came out in, uh, in the 40s. People love to put these now in uh, babies' nurseries, into a kitchen, they can Everywhere. put it into a powder room. What's going on here? You didn't have enough crystals. I see. Ah, you didn't tell me you had another one. I bought this for parts, and I bought this here. But I might like that more. This might be more versatile. And I like this has got a cool finial as well. Right. Kind of looks this like looks a little like a pineapple. crown at the end. It does. The pineapple is the symbol of hospitality. What's the best deal you could give me on this? 20. $20? Wow. This is great. 30 then, if it's. No, don't you? No, no, no. I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm poor. Uh uh. Uh uh. Wait, this is, this this is broken broke. here. And I'm concerned about this missing right here. Do you have another one hidden that you can pull out? Yes, I do have another one. Yes! It's my lucky day. Yes! I think LA does not want things that are blemished. They don't really want a project to work on. That's why I'm going against this chandelier. Oh, Donald, my lucky day. Oh, isn't that these, nice? These are all here. What are you asking for this? For the same deal, Oh, uh, No, no. Oh. This is 30. Why is this it's a 30? Got, why? Because this is all here. Okay. All these pieces. But am I going to have to tighten the screws? Oh, yeah. And Donald, I'm going to have to clean it, and we're going to electrify it. Yeah, I'll put a new cord in here. This is going to take a lot of TLC. Right. I'm going to have to really bring this back to life. That's why you got a little better price here, because it's more together. Can we meet in the middle between 30 and 20? Um, 28. It's How about pretty close uh, 25? 25. You got a deal. Ah, yay! Thank you, Donald. I'm going to give you a good deal on that. Thank you. 
We crashed the party, Miller. Ah. How you doing, baby? Now we know why John hasn't made it back to home base. I bet he was one of those kids who had to get a sneak peek at his Christmas presents no matter what. I think mine's better than yours. Ooh. He's gonna have to learn that that personality ain't gonna get him far down south. Not around here, no. <laughs> Looks like Miller just made sure John won't be getting any good deals at this booth in the next buying round. He's not a gentleman, is he? He would no, not, all right. he he would not just... be a Kentucky Colonel, to say the least. No. <laughs> Thank you, Donald. This Thank was a you. lot of fun. Yes, it was. Wish me luck. I'll be back. That'll look pretty. Thank you. Now the pickers will assess each other's items to determine if each of them fulfilled the target assignment, lighting. Wow. The pickers can reject any item for whatever reason they choose. Wrong or right, majority rules. All right, guys, let there be light. Let there be cool. light. Indeed. Looks like we all met the challenge. We did meet the challenge. Here's uh, my chrome 40s floor lamp. I think it's got the original shade. Can I comment on it? Yeah, please, go ahead. If you look up here, you see where the fixture mounts in. Mm -hmm. Somebody's taken off the original 1940s fixture and replaced it with a 1970s, early 80s round fluorescent fixture. Now, a purist would probably want to see the original fixture there. Just me being me, i am always got to point <laughs> that out. Of course. So, but we other love than you as the purist. It's a cool yeah. lamp, so yeah. all right. You fulfilled the challenge, Bob. I agree. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Job, you man. did it, baby. All right, I got a pair. I found a really cool pair today. You did. I want to plug them in, too. It's a shame you couldn't get something with a few more light bulbs. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, they're just light bulbs. You can buy these at any store that there is that oh, sells yeah. lighting, and these are easily replaceable. They're kind of vintage, just a perfect amount of kitsch. It looks like something it's maybe you'd bulbs. find in a barber shop. I don't think a barber shop. I think maybe the movie Shampoo with uh, Warren Beatty. <laughs> <laughs> this is classic cool stuff here. They're definitely Good job. 1975 to 1982. Absolutely. I have the matching pair in my living room. John, how many lamps do you have in your living room? Every, every time he's got another lamp. This lamp is in my living room. Cool. Identical. It's a harmless fetish. Oh, you know? OK. You have a giant thumbs up from me. Oh, yeah, giant no, thumbs up. Definitely. I do all right? Good job. Good job. You did good. Check this one out. Check this out. OK. Whoa. Whoa. Show. It's it working. Does. It does work. Yes, it does work. But don't you see those all over Los Angeles? Hello. They're going to Los Angeles. Supply and demand, you just. You have to hope that it's not oversaturated there. You, you did good. You, you brought a cool lamp to the table. Thumbs up. Hopefully you Thumbs got it up. for a great cool. price. All right, Mella, show us what you got. OK. Really the, the best you got for there, last. Mel? I have a great 1940s brass chandelier. And these are all supposed to be positioned up. Traditional, classic. Now, do you think without it having all the little candle protectors and all the little things on that, people at the auction are actually going to want to buy that, or is it too much of a project? No, that can easily be done. Right. I actually think it would be great to buy for a project, to put candles in and hang it from a tree in a backyard or something like that. Oh, absolutely, That's... yeah. It's OK. It's, it it's can lighting. Serve many I'm not doing purposes. backflips over it. I'm not either, but it's lighting, so. It is lighting. It's a nice up. counterpoint to all the cool chrome. Right. Yeah. All right, give you a thumbs up. Absolutely. Thank all right, you. thumbs cool. up. Paul Miller, I don't know what to say about that lamp. I don't know. That's just not anything I would even ever think of buying, not for out there. She'll be lucky to even get a bid on it, really. You've seen the cuckoo clock. Now let's hear more about it. Our clock was made about 10 years ago. It's all hand carved, and it is the largest trumpeter cuckoo clock in the United States. No one else is making it in the world today. The design of this particular clock is from the Black Forest area in Germany. This is the most common scene that they used on cuckoo clocks. It's the hunting scene, and you'll find it. It's got the, the stag's head on the top with the horns. Our cuckoo trumpeter clock cuckoos every 15 minutes on the quarter hour. Then we have a trumpeter that comes out on the bottom, and he actually trumpets the appropriate number of hours. It's the only one in the world that's manufactured today like that. Time for the bonus round. The pickers are on their way to meet dealer Michael Rittman, a native and resident of Louisville, Kentucky. Michael specializes in sculpture and jewelry. What do we got here? Yeah, what is well, this? Well, this is a horse racing trophy, Trey. OK, it's from 1927, from a steeplechase race. Johnny Madden was the trainer and uh, horse breeder for this particular race. Now, Johnny Madden was one of the leading trainers and breeders. He bred numerous derby winners, one triple crown winner, and this, this trays in just perfect condition. It's actually 62.17 troy ounces of silver. The question is, 1859 
silver was discovered in the United States. What was used to make silver items prior to 1859 in the United States? Miller, you want to start us off? Come on. Okay. We'll retire. Okay. Huh? Oh, you're back. Oh, my turn. I said coin. Okay. What was used to make silver? So I'm guessing a pressing process. Okay. Good luck. All right, go get him, Bob. <laughs> what do you think? All right. How about nickel? Okay. Come on back. Okie doke. This was definitely a tricky one. You, you've got me totally on this. I mean, blow me away with this one completely. You two got it correct. Oh, sweet. I know it. They were made out of Get U.S. Out. mint coins, silver mint coins. Mint coins? Coin silver? And then but they said there was no angle. silver ore, so where did they get the silver from then? Or Foreign coins, yeah, coin they, they silver. Other... U.S. mint coins, silver coins. So just tell me what we want. I just want to know what we want. You, you two have won $50 towards your auction mm -hmm. profits for the day. This is great. We've got a huge advantage. Absolutely. $50 ahead. Your skin. Never. I know your skin. Never. A lot of fun, man. Back. A lot of fun. Take cool. care. Awesome. All right, guys. Interesting. Who knew? Who they knew? knew. Coin silver. Hey, now it's time to shop till you stop. It's an untimed round where our pickers can buy one or two items, but no more than that. The round begins now. Let's do it. Don't melt in the sun. <laughs> Having tied with Kevin for the bonus round, to go into it with this $50 cushion feels great. This is going to be a big challenge ahead of me on top of the heat, which is killer today. Oh, it is so hot. Woo. Now, this is cool. Hi. What are you asking for this? Uh, I'll take uh, 475 Oh, my goodness. That's pretty high. Is it comfortable? Yeah, it's very comfortable. It'll probably burn you up. Hot as it is out here today. This leather will burn you today, won't it? <laughs> yep, sure will. Woo! Picking her way through heavy humidity with the Kentucky heat, pushing the mercury around the 90 degree mark, Miller spots an image of Marilyn Monroe on a thermometer. This could do really well in LA. For Marilyn collectors, they go crazy over items like that. She can't help but hear the film legend sing Heat Wave, her musical analogy between beauty and the heat. Marilyn is very hot right now. She's on the cover of Vanity Fair, and there are a lot of new photos that are being released. Hi there. Hi. It looks nice and cool in there. Woo. OK. I want to be in this ice box now. All right. Woo, it's a hot day. This is a good one. Especially when Miller sees that the thermometer features two other hot Marilyn Monroe references, the movie title, Some Like It Hot, and the dress she wore in the seven-year itch. The wardrobe that made hot weather as bearable as did the lyrics to this song. My name's Miller. Miller. Maurice. Nice to meet you, Maurice. Would you work with me on the price? You're asking 110. A little bit. What about 50? No. Mm. I'll go 80 on it. That's it. That'd be the bottom dollar. Can I give you a 20 to keep it on hold for me? Sure. Okay. Miller does the fair thing, leaving a deposit, but she also knows that if she doesn't buy the thermometer, that $20 is going to count against her total profits no matter what. Keep the freezer cold for me. So it seems Maurice may have the upper hand when she returns. What do you think, they're from the 70s? They went 70 for the pair. They've got that shabby chic look. They're not bad. I think they'd be great for LA. Tell me about them. Come sit here and talk to me about them. These are from an estate in Lexington, Kentucky. Ooh. These are great for Los Angeles because the design is very airy, and it's 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 cool stuff. I go sixty dollars as low as I can go. The chairs. I'm not in love with them. They're not my killer buy. They don't jump out at me. But you know what? It's a safe buy. Fifty dollars, my bottom dollar. Oh, it's my lucky day. It's my lucky day. Woo! Here's fifty dollars. Okay. Get the right price, and it's got the right look for Los Angeles. But I just don't know that those yellow chairs are going to be my winning piece. Not feeling confident about the chairs, 
and remembering about the deposit on that thermometer. Hi, Maurice. Miller returns to seal the deal. So what's, what's the magic number? Well, you gave me what? 60? No. No, I gave you a 20. 20, right, 20. you owe me 60. So 40 left? 60. 75? No, 80. 76? Those $4 would help me a long way. 80. 77? Uh-uh. <laughs> You're a tough dealer, 20, 40, 60. I already gave you 20 before. This is a very tough second round. I really could not come up with that stellar item for Los Angeles. Thank you. All right, y'all have a good day. Thanks. It's really hot today, so I'm trying to find something that's really cool looking. I've already seen a few maybes, but nothing that has real wow factor yet. Holy moly, you got some style, let me tell you. I was drawn in by the orange lamps, which are kind of wild. Now tell me, did those orange boys come out of your own house? No, I actually, I've had them for a while though. What's your name? I'm Laura. Laura Bob. Bob. Nice to meet you. I find that the item that draws me into a booth isn't the same thing that I buy. Tell me about the fireplace you have here, because it gave me an idea that, hey, this woman has cool stuff, and I knew that I was gonna find a treasure here. Wait till you see this. This is sweet. When the music plays, this actually vibrates. Wow. You don't by chance have a uh, Elvis record in here, do you? No. <laughs> <laughs> or a uh, Johnny Mathis. Yeah. This is a slow dance to chances are, I yeah. think. You're more into what? Pink Floyd. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, can I ask what your, what your house looks like? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I think building a relationship with a dealer is really important. Building a relationship is one thing, but sometimes Bob takes it one step further, as if the two of them are setting up house. The minute I saw Laura, I knew that we were gonna get along just fine, she and I. Well, you're officially my favorite dealer here so far because you have style, you have cool. If you can imagine the Johnny Mathis music Bob would have playing in the background, it almost sounds as if he's about to ask her to go steady. Let me see what else you, you have here. Is this a round bed frame, Laura? Yes, it is. Easy, Bob, slow it down a little bit, getting Laura to venture into the bedroom. It's chrome, mid-century modern, and a ton of fun. This could easily be on the set of a 1970s movie. It's so cool. I guess this would require a round mattress. <laughs> really, Bob? What exactly are you suggesting? Remember what network you're on, Bob. We'll have none of that here, at least not on TV. Well, not necessarily. Laura, please don't encourage him. Yeah? Um, I've had it uh, where I've actually put like bar stools. I love it as a room divider. Basically, that's what I did. But yeah, these are the two missing pieces and I actually have the screws too. There's two pieces to the back of the headboard that need screws. Hey Bob, hello. Turn the music off in your head and wake up. Take a good look at what you're about to buy. The curved headboard to a circular bed that still needs assembly and is minus the bed. There's a good chance even getting it for free won't be cheap enough to make a profit. I'll break you a great deal yeah, for this. What is a real deal though? Because I'm really tight on budget. Artificial just really Like I, like. Say 65. See, so yeah, and, and my like hard number would be $40 tops. It, Give me 45. I feel a little better at 45 than 40 bucks. Or I could go get the screws and then we could go back to where we were. <laughs> if it wouldn't take too long to get the screws, why don't we do that? Yeah. Okay, I yeah. could do that. Okay, cool. All right, yeah, I'll go All and right. take a look up on the truck. That's a pretty bold errand you're sending her on. Love you. Hold on. Did you hear what I just heard? Love you. You better love her, because back in the 50s, once you make a bed together, you're expected to marry. I like to shop with the same dealer and build a relationship. And frankly, Laura was kind enough to offer me some screws, have some laughs, and at the end of the day, I want to shop more with her. Bob, this isn't a flea market edition of The Bachelor. This is about making profits at auction, and look what you're about to buy. All right, this is teamwork at its finest. I think you and I should get a job in a candy factory together. <laughs> okay, Bob, let me give you a little tip. When courting someone, even in the 50s, you don't want to imply she's the Ethel to your Lucy. It's a mixed message at best. Okay. <laughs> we had this 
back and forth that was familiar and fun and playful. And the truth of the matter is, if somebody likes you, you're gonna get a better price at a flea market. Laura, we're batting a thousand here. I still can't get <laughs> that bed frame screwed together. I know we were hovering around the $40 mark. Um, since I'm walking out with a handful of screws and two pieces, can we get down to 35? Okay. All right. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and take the the headboard okay. because I think I can do something with it. It's a great room divider. It's so cool, and you have been more than patient and lovely. Okay, and I appreciate you doing all. Oh the come on! Camping. It was it was a joy, and you're a joy. I have one more thing I can purchase. I was hoping maybe I could give you back that five dollar bill that you gave me in change and walk out with this little table. What do you think? I got eighty bucks in that table. Oh. Yeah, that's uh, are, yeah. too much for me. They're hot. I understand. I know and that's I like how it works. You. I like you. I like you I too. Swear. I, I want to <laughs> slow dance with you. <laughs> what I would know. be your absolute best on it? Forty bucks. That's as low as See, I See, and I was go. going. My bottom line yeah. is, is thirty. Oh wee! And that look. Yeah, you got that look. Give me the thirty bucks. I haven't. I'm gonna give you thirty bucks, and I'm gonna give you a hug. Can I do that? I'm a little sweaty. Yeah, but... I'll take the thirty bucks. All right. She's awesome and lovely. It's a hot day, everybody's sweating, everybody wants to sort of pack up and move on, and nobody wants to put more furniture on the truck. So I do believe that that's in my favor as well. Oh, you, you're real smooth. <laughs> Bob over here, I kind of dug him. All the work he did with the other item, I kind of said, let me bend a little bit and give Bob a deal. Uh -huh. Nice I'll to meet you. I'll see you, nice to meet you. Okay. Our chemistry worked, and I got the deals as a result of it. This round, I'm just trying to find some good bargains. I have no set item I'm looking for. I'm out feeling the flea market, kind of carousing around. I'm feeling out the different vendors. I'm just out looking for something that's going to make me money. You're about to watch Kevin Bruno accomplish something very hard to pull off, especially on the fly, with a dealer he's never met before. Where'd you get all these neat, cool canes? And at this moment, even Kevin has no idea what's about to take place. How much would a cane like this cost? $100. 100 bucks, huh? I personally sell a lot of canes during the course of the year, so I'm kind of drawn to them when I see them. And he had some really neat ones there. Now, is this a horse measuring cane? You're very good. You're the only person that's known that today. Right. <laughs> Kevin often impresses a dealer with what he knows, and since he doesn't do it ostentatiously, it makes a doubly good impact. It measures all right here by the hands. It tells you exactly how big your horse is. It has a little level to make sure it's all nice and perfect. And the little level's gone, but that's okay. And uh, it's in a folds away and compact. And in the world of canes, it's called a gadget cane. Yeah, you're pretty good. It folds up just like that, goes right back in. There you go. It's pretty neat. After an introduction like that, this dealer is happy to have Kevin browse around his booth for as long as he likes. This is cool. It's Punch from Punch and Judy. Is it an original one? As far as I know, yeah. Sure looks it. Yeah. Kevin seems to agree, but the look on his face says something different. What can you tell me about this one? Got him up uh, at an antique show in Massachusetts. Uh, never had another one like that. Don't know too much about him. Right. By saying he doesn't know too much about the object, the dealer gives Kevin the opening he needs to keep going. Uh, what are you asking for something like this in your booth? Uh, 150. Really? Yeah. That sounds kind of real inexpensive for an antique bank of this quality. Notice how Kevin's skepticism is phrased in terms that won't insult the dealer. By suggesting the dealer may be charging too little for an original, he doesn't put him on the defensive, as he would if he had said the dealer may be charging too much for a reproduction. I don't know. I'm going to see if I can do a little research. Yeah. Yeah, OK. Cool. Before I would ever pull the trigger on something like this, I want to know exactly what it is I'm looking at. Right. By doing his research in front of the dealer, Kevin is suggesting they're in this together, once again avoiding any adversarial insinuations. My gut tells me it's probably not an original one, but yeah. one probably from the 1950s or 60s okay, or something. Okay, okay, okay. We'll see what we can come up with. Kevin has just prepared the dealer for what, for him, seems already a foregone conclusion. This bank is most likely a repro, not an original. You see they're being remade today. People would actually take these and put them in a fire, make them look older than what they are. Buyer beware at that point. You really have to stop and think about how great the bargain is that you're looking at. 
I'm usually too good to be true. I'm not confident enough that this is like one of the older, older ones, but more of like one from the 1950s probably. A nice one. And priced accordingly for the time period, because if this was original, it'd be, in my opinion, $1,000 plus. Cool. Thanks Thank a lot, you. guys. No hard feelings as Kevin takes off to find a shop to your stop item somewhere else. It's a Carl Sorensen bronze bowl. Back a couple few years ago, this stuff was really hot. I don't know what the market is on it, so I'm gonna find out what the market is on it right now. Just in my opinion, it's even better than what I'm finding. And they're all selling for $200 around that range, and here's one for 50 bucks. It's got great colors and real good design with this swooped handle like this. I'm gonna see if I can make a deal on it right now. On your bowl. Yeah. Kinda cool? Yeah. Kinda hot? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh, what do you, what are you thinking? Uh, you might want to sell me the bowl for. Uh, I'll go down to forty bucks. It's signed. It is. It's cool. She's the boss, huh? She's the boss. The boss would say forty-five. So you better be glad he said forty. Forty? All right. I'm gonna do a deal with you for forty bucks. All right. This is a cool bowl. I'm gonna be honest. Probably ten years ago, this stuff was selling for twice as much as what it is today. But today, it still holds its own. I didn't hit a million dollar piece, but I think we got a real good one here. Kevin returns to the same atrium where he and Miller won the bonus round and finds a book of movie posters that was there for the taking by any one of the pickers. 50 years of movie posters. These are like great reference books. You don't see these every day, and this one's in pretty good condition. And you want to go home with this thing, or can I make you a real sloppy offer on it? Not very sloppy. 20 I love bucks. It. I see them on the internet for $30 in almost mint condition. Oh, really? Yeah. 20. Not 25. 20 bucks. Yeah, 20 bucks. $20. One all right. bill. Cash. All right, green, all right. Drum roll. Da -da -da -da. <laughs> thank you very much. Right, thank thank you. you. What's your name? Good. My name is Bobby, and I've just been doing this for 50, 60, 60 years of a collector of vintage clothes and 50 years dealing. Wow. <laughs> How long have you actually had this book? I just put it out. I've had it in my collection for probably, I think, 25 years. It's wonderful. She took the $20 bike, and away we went with it. It's going to the perfect market. Abel is right nearby Hollywood. That's the market you want to put it in, right where it came from originally. Well, thank you very much. This thank was you. wonderful. I thank appreciate you. you uh, you're wheeling and dealing with me. Oh, thank you. All right, cool. It is warm. I'm not sure where to go. So I'm going to follow my instincts, but we're going to find the fun stuff. Classic styrofoam mannequin head. I was at a show about 10 years ago. A guy had 200, if he had one, of these in bags. So I made him an offer, bought the entire two bags, 200 heads of these. I've been using them continuously. I've got them all throughout my house, holding all my hats. It's my wife and I both wear hats. Considering how many hats we've seen John wear already, I can only imagine how many hats he means when he says, throughout my house. Oh, that looks good on me. <laughs> I love it. Tell me about the chairs. When I first saw them, I immediately thought, Milo Bowman. When I flipped them over, there's no tag on it. Well, what did you say we were looking for them before? Uh, for the pair, I think it was six eighty-five. Yeah, it's getting late in the day, and better to lug less home. Lug less home, indeed, especially in the heat, my friend. Exactly. He tipped his hand. You never tell a deal of that, somebody like me. I'm going to be dead honest with you, um, because I don't know who they are. They're brown, not black, which kind of limits their sale ability. I don't want to spend more than 300 the pair. Code, since I like your vest, <laughs> I'll take three for them. We'll take three for the pair. At 300, I'll do that. That'll work. <laughs> the expression may be clothes make the man, but in John's case, clothes make the deal. This isn't the first time the affinity a dealer has for part of John's wardrobe helped get him a better price. How much are your glasses? Oh, aren't these fun? They are. I like the bracelet. Oh, thank you. Appreciate your business. Thank you. Thank you. It's only because of the vest. I know yes. that. Of course. Yes, we have the great minds think alike, you know? I love these chairs. They're classic Art Deco skyscraper design. These would be perfect in my living room. Imagine that lamp I bought today. 
coming up between these two chairs, a cool cocktail table down here, some magazines on it, you drink in the evening while you're reading. Oh, man, that's just home. That's heaven. John has a habit of flaunting his Achilles heel without even knowing it. Suggesting what he buys would look good in his living room makes you wonder if he's buying for himself or a likely pool of bidders. This is my living room. This is like going home. All that's missing are my cats and my wife. Let's listen to what he says this time one more time. These would be perfect in my living room. Oh, man, that's just home. Remember, John just told us what says home to him, a house filled with mannequins wearing his hats. But does that say home to potential bidders? I want to go see if I can find a functional coffee table now, a Noguchi style with the amoeba shape and a glass top. If I could find a table like that, the chairs, the lamp, and a table, I got a whole living room suite for somebody ready to rock and roll. It takes a certain kind of confidence to think a bidder would be looking to furnish an entire living room at an auction. But if you think John was kidding, then why is he on the hunt for the missing piece to his dream ensemble? As if he's shopping at a department store. Hey, how you doing, folks? I'm John. Who are you? Lee? John, you're? Michelle. Michelle. Nice to meet you, John. Nice to meet you guys. I'm trying to find a cocktail table right now. Maybe the heat's getting to him, and not in a sexy Marilyn way. Do you have anything like that? Anything? No. But you do have that, don't you? Well, that's very neat. They come out of a building or anything? Actually, they come out of a school. a school. A school? Man, that's just fabulous. What are you asking for the pair of lamps? Um, I have 95 each on them. If you did both, I could do both for 150. Both for 150? Mm-hmm. I have to think about that. I want to see if I can get the table first. But if I can, this could work. OK. If I can't find a cocktail table, I may home in on those lamps. They're screaming LA, New York, industrial, mid-century. Hold on, what is this? Well, if only it were glass, that's what we're looking for. It's reassuring to know not any kidney-shaped mid-century modern coffee table will do. Even John's fantasy ensemble has its standards. I'm back. Oh, God. <laughs> you guys dying in the heat like we are? Oh, that's rough. Actually, it's, it's pretty cool under here. Under here, yeah, this is beautiful. Yeah, it really it's is. It's pretty cool. And I'm back to your industrial lamps. I said I'd do them both for um, $175. Let's, uh, I don't think that's right. Let's hear what she quoted John again. I could do both for $150. I'll do Most one everyone is prone to memory lapses when remembering prices in this heat. I love you to death. <laughs> OK. But I, I'm, I, I really need them to be around $75 for the pair. For the pair? Yeah. How about we meet in the middle at 100 100 for the pair? for the pair. I love it. <laughs> We're both happy. Yeah, that works, that works. What beautiful people, young people excited to be in the business, getting into it full time. I love the selling. It just gives me joy to know someone loves the things just as much as I do. I found two cool lamps and I'm really, really happy. I can see those in a kitchen, in a bar room, and you got some groovy light happening. Let's review all the items and what the pickers spent. Here are Miller's lots, a chandelier, a Marilyn Monroe thermometer, and a pair of yellow patio chairs. John's lots are comprised of a modern chrome floor lamp, a pair of chrome and leather chairs, and a pair of metal pendant light fixtures. Kevin's lots include modern chrome lamps, a Carl Sorensen bowl, and a book of movie posters. Bob's lots consist of a chrome floor lamp, a curved chrome headboard, and a mid-century modern wooden slat table. Now it's on to Los Angeles, where all of their items will be sold at Abel auctions. The auction house is filling up with bidders from the LA area. They include dealers trying to buy low to flip these antiques, and others are collectors who may be inclined to spend more for what they really want. Watching the bidding from behind the scenes will be all four of our pickers. But before they do, do any of them have buyer's remorse? Or do they think any of their opponents should have buyer's remorse? Let's find out. Not so sure about the chandelier, but I love the thermometer. Oh, oh but Marilyn's sizzling. <laughs> the thermometer says some like it hot, but yet her dress is from seven-year itch. 
Seems like the maker was a little confused. No, 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 I like it because that's gonna attract more collectors. There you go, good You're comeback. You're gonna get both movie right. audiences. I saw that same piece that you're calling a headboard. I just couldn't figure out what to do with it. Well, my designer's eye took over. I have a million ideas. I think it could be a great bar. I think it could be a great table. Bar. Exactly, mm -hmm. there's yeah. a million uses yeah. for it. This is the moment we've been waiting for. Remember, as the winners of the bonus round, Miller and Kevin are starting off with $50 in the black. All right, here we go. All right, now we're selling the book of movie posters that Angel's holding straight in front of you guys. All the movie posters, 10 for the movie posters. No interest, huh? Five, 10, now 15. I have 10 in the back, now 15 for the lot. 15, now 20, 20, now 25, sir. 20's on my far left, now 25, 30, 30, now 40. All right, I'll take it. 40, how about 50? 50, now 60. Oh, yeah. 60, how about 70? Whew. 60, last chance at 70, you're all out? Perfect. Was sold for $60 to buy our 687. Sweet. Did it. That's awesome. All right, we have a metal fixture here. Just buy it as a metal fixture. Can you call it a chandelier, please? <laughs> 5, 10, now 15, 20, 25, 25, 30. Yes. There you go. 40, sir. 40, way on my left now. 50, yes or no? Way in the corner, sold for $40. Buyer is... 846, thank you. You better send him a thank you letter. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> On this swivel lamp here, 10 for the chrome lamp. 10 for it, no interest. I have 10 to start at 20, 30, 40, now 50. Now 50, guys, 40, 50, now 60, 60. I have 50s in the third row, now 60. You're making money. Yeah, about 60 in advance for the lamp. Sold 50, buyer. OK. Made some money. Right, there you go. Luck. I have to admit, I wasn't 100% confident <laughs> in that lamp. This is the two-part modern lamp here. We do have the marble base that goes with it that James is holding. That's very sleek. Yeah. How much for the modern lamp? Let's start at $10. $10? 10, now 20, 30, how about 40? 50's on my right, now 60, yes or no? Hey, you're up. Ooh. For a modern lamp, awfully cheap. 50, now 60, 60, how about 70? Oh, he's jumping. He's got an aggressive buyer there. 70, yes or no? I have 60's on my left, now 70 for this modern piece. Come on, come on. Come on. Guess that's all we're gonna do. Sold 60 by our 7009. All right, small profit. Okay. All right. All right. All right. On the mid century modern uh, slat bench here. Here you go. I have $10 to start it. I got 10, 20, now 30, 40, 50. How about 60, 60, now 70, 70, 80. 80 is way in the back now, 90. Keep going. Contemporary slat bench, 80 last chance at 90. Please. Sold 80 to you, sir. Very good. $50 yes. profit. Yep. All right, on the woven yellow chairs. Those are nice. $10 for the open arm chairs. I have 10, now 20, how about 30, sir? 30, now 40, 30, how about 40 for the chairs? 40, way in the back, now 50, 40, now 50. Sold for $40, way in the back. Oh, oh. $10. Oh, uh, let's see these. On the chrome modern set, two assorted will sell them as. 50 for the two assorted. I have 50, now 75. 75, now 100. 100, sir. For modern lamps, 100, now 125, yes or no? Once, twice, third, last time, now 125. Guess that's all I'm going to get. Sold 100 on my right. Whoa. Ugh. Crash and burn. Oh, Man. that's horrible. They're kind well, of dated for today. All right, take a look at these good-looking fixtures here. We have the shades attached to them. How much for the fixtures? On my left, straight in front of you guys, 50 for the two fixtures. 50 for them, not worth it. 10 for the two fixtures here. Oh, come on. I have 10 as an opening bid for two modern fixtures. 10, 20, thank you. Now 30. They're flimsy. $40, 30, now 40, no. 30 last chance. Sold 30. Crash oh, and burn, man. too. We're talking about crash and burn, yeah. You've got some fierce competition. Uh, you do, too. Yeah, yeah. it's going to be real interesting. Look out. <laughs> On the two modern, uh, what, chromed and leather chairs, 50 to start it for the pair, 50 for the pair. Now 60, 60, how about 70, 70, now 80. Yes, for the modern chairs, come on, 70, 80, 80, now 90, 90. 80's in the front row, now 90. It's $40 a piece for these chairs. 80, now 90, last chance. Oh, come on. 
You're all through. Sold 80 in the front row by our, what, 687? Is that right? Oh, Kim. Oh, you oh. got crushed. You know? Oh, oh, oh. All right, starting off on this round uh, modern headboard, all chrome. How much does it start the headboard for your round bed? 50 to start it. No interest at $50. Anyone want to shake a shot? Thank you. I have 10 as an opening bid. Now 20, 20. How about 30, 30. Now 40, 40. Yes or no? I have $30 bid on my right. Now 40. Nope. Sold $30 to buyer 1705. Oh, Thank you, sir. $5 loss? <laughs> Can you believe you lost $5? Oh. All right, on the Carl Sorensen Bowl here being held up on the Sorensen Bowl. 10 for the bowl. Any interest in the bowl at all? Five for the bowl. No one needs a bowl, huh? Five, now 10, 15, 20, 20, now 25. Now 25, any advance for the Sorensen Bowl? Sold to my far left for $20. Okay. Wow. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Don't be so quick to point. We're all burning. It's getting hot in here. It's getting very hot. <laughs> On this uh, Marilyn Monroe Some Like It Hot thermometer, interesting collectible piece here. Anyone want to start it for $10 to start the bidding? I don't know. 10, now 20, 30, how about 40? 40 is way in the back. 50, now 60, 60, 60, sir, yes or no? No, down, down. I have 50s in the front, 60, now 70, 70, how about 80, 80, now 90. Really? 90, yes or no, 90, now 100, 100, 125. Please start fanning me down. 100, how about 125, any advance? <laughs> Sold for $100. All right, all right. Wow, it's close, Miller. And the winner is Miller Gaffney. Yes! Wow! Yay! Congratulations! Woo! I knew it was going to happen, my first win. These boys can't handle it that I won. It's about time that they start giving me some credit here. You Can know, you handle it? I, I need a fan, please. Don't play it too much. <laughs> don't overplay it. Bob, the chrome headboard for the right customer may have been a really nice piece. Problem being is, how many people walk into an auction that have a round bed that need a chrome headboard? John, the reason the chrome and leather chairs didn't do as well as we would have hoped, those pieces are something that we see here every single week. They have a good look to them, but those chairs, unfortunately, are a dime a dozen here. Kevin's lamps, that same lamp from the 50s, would have hit here. But because it was probably a 70s or 80s reproduction, it falls flat. And they did. I purchased a chrome floor lamp with a yellow shade. It was a neat combination of an antique lamp with the chrome, which kind of get, gave it an updated feeling, and yet the shade was kind of a romantic touch. It was a soft shade. And the, the, the way the chrome was on the lamp, it gave it a little touch of a modern feel. Sold 50, buyer 146. And I was happy with the price that I got. Um, I think I'm going to use it in a, a setting to display with the chaise lounge I have. I bought uh, two chrome and brown leather chairs today. What attracted me to the chairs were the chrome frame and the brown leather upholstery on it. You're all through. Sold 80 in the front row by our, what, 687, is that right? I think I did fantastic. <laughs> I bought them for a very good deal. I've seen them go much higher in previous auctions. My son has a new house, and I thought these chrome chairs would look nice in a modern home. I hope my son will enjoy it very much. I'm sure he will.